Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to do the derivatives of the natural exponential function and the natural log function in this video. We'll start with the natural exponential function e to the x. If we want to figure out what the derivative of e to the x is with respect to x, in other words, if our f of x is e to the x, what is f prime of x? For this one, real quick, we'll look at the limit definition, but we're going to talk through it pretty quickly here. So remember the formula for f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So if I take my e to the x as my f of x and I plug that into my limit definition, then I get the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x all over h. Properties of exponents says I can take this e to the x plus h and actually break that up into two pieces as e to the x times e to the h, two separate exponentials. And now in common on the top, you'll notice I have an e to the x in both terms, so I'm going to factor that out and we'll have the same limit with e to the x times the quantity e to the h minus 1. Now this e to the x is not actually involved in the limit part because the limit is actually asking about as h approaches 0, and this e to the x does not have h in it anywhere. So we'll go ahead and pull that exponential out and just look at this limit of e to the h minus 1 over h as h approaches 0. We'll go ahead and do that by looking at a graph. So if I graph e to the x minus 1 over x, or e to the h minus 1 over h, you can see that we get this hole in some exponential looking graph, and the hole on the axis is actually at y equals 1. So this limit is 1. And so we get e to the x times 1, which of course is e to the x. And so you can see that our derivative of e to the x is actually itself e to the x. So when we take the derivative of e to the x, we get the exact same thing we started with. We'll go ahead and put that formula up in the corner. Let's go ahead and work through the derivative of the natural log of x. So we're going to go ahead and think of y equals ln x. We'll do this a little bit differently. I'm going to rewrite this in the exponential form. This is the log form for this. We could go ahead and rearrange this in exponential form and say that's the same as e to the y equals x. You could take exponential base e of both sides. And what we'll go ahead and do from here is actually use implicit differentiation. So I want to take the derivative of this entire equation with respect to x. So I have the derivative with respect to x of e to the y equals x. Now the derivative of e to the y with respect to x, we know that this formula tells us we should get the same thing. We should get e to the y. But when we do implicit differentiation, Remember that we need to use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of y is dy dx. So we get this extra times dy dx on the left side. For the right side, the derivative with respect to x of x is just 1. So we get e to the y dy dx equals 1 if we use implicit differentiation on this exponential statement here. Now if I want to find dy dx, I could just simply divide both sides by this e to the y term, so we get dy dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. Now this formula is in terms of y, and I would really like it to be in terms of x, because we were dealing with an original function that was supposed to be in terms of x anyway. So if you look at my original statement that I have here, once I converted to exponential form, you can see that e to the y we said was equal to x. So this 1 over e to the y is actually going to equal 1 over x. And so we get that the derivative of ln of x is actually 1 over x. All right, so we've got our formulas for the derivative of e to the x and ln x up in the corner here. We're going to go ahead and do some examples of exponential derivatives. So we'll go ahead and use this that we get the same thing we started with, but remember that we will need the chain rule anytime that we have anything more complicated than just x in our exponential. So here the derivative with respect to x of e to the 3x would be itself e to the 3x. But then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the inside is 3x. The derivative of 3x would be 3. The power goes down by 1, so we just end up with 3 there. And our derivative here actually is 3e to the 3x. Looking at the second one here, we have the derivative with respect to x of e to the x squared. So using this same idea here, we go ahead and keep what we started with. We'll have e to the x squared. But now the chain rule is going to give us times the derivative of the inside. The inside is x squared. The derivative of x squared, power rule, the 2 comes out front and the power goes down by 1. So we get the derivative of the inside is 2x from the chain rule. So now if we go ahead and put this out front, we could say our derivative is actually 2x times e to the x squared.
Looking at some more here, I have an exponential and a sine function. So here I'm going to use the product rule, the derivative of this. So I'll think of this as my f here, and I'll think of this as my g. So remember that my product rule is f prime g plus f g prime. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So our f prime, we would keep the e to the 2x, derivative of an exponential, but don't forget the chain rule, right? Times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 2. So we go ahead and multiply by 2. So this is our f prime. Now times g, we just keep the sine x that's there. So sine x will stay. So that's done. Plus regular f function. So we'll keep the e to the 2x as it is. And now g prime, right? The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So we get e to the 2x times 2 times sine x. That's all our first term. I'll clean that up a bit. I'll say 2 out front, 2 e to the 2x sine x, plus e to the 2x cosine x. And if you wanted to, you could certainly factor out. You don't need to, but you could also say e to the 2x times the quantity 2 sine x plus cosine x, if you want. Let's look at some exponentials inside of some trig functions here. So we have the derivative with respect to x of cosine of e to the x. So chain rule here says take the derivative of the outside idea, leaving the inside alone. And then chain rule will give us multiply by the derivative of the inside. So let's go ahead and do the derivative of the cosine part. So derivative of cosine something is negative sine of something. So now don't touch the inside stuff, leave that e to the x. Now chain rule says multiply what you got by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of e to the x we know is itself, so we get times e to the x additionally. Leaving it like this may be misleading to people. They may think that the extra exponential is also inside of the sine function. So it's probably nicer to go ahead and write this as negative e to the x in front and then sine of e to the x so we can see what's really in the sine function and what isn't. Over here, the derivative with respect to x of inverse tangent of e to the x. Now remember that the derivative of inverse tangent, just in case you've forgotten, of x is actually 1 over 1 plus x squared, just in case we haven't seen that in a while. So the derivative here We'll replace our x in the formula with e to the x and use the chain rule. We would get 1 over 1 plus e to the x squared. Chain rule says times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is just e to the x. So we get our e to the x now on top of the fraction. And down here, using properties of exponents with this, I get 1 plus if I have an exponent of an exponent, I actually multiply these. So we would actually probably write this as e to the 2x, not e to the x squared, but e to the 2x. All right, let's look at some natural log examples. We have the derivative with respect to x of ln of 4x. So we'll worry about the log idea first, and then we'll worry about the 4x part. So this definition says, remember that the derivative of ln something is 1 over that something, including the chain rule. So here, derivative of ln of 4x is 1 over 4x. And then the derivative of the inside, the chain rule, derivative of 4x would be times 4. And so if we have 4 over 4x, then actually we get 1 over x when we reduce this, right? It almost looks as though we had no chain rule at all, but we did. It just reduced. Let's look at this one here. The derivative with respect to x of ln of x to the 4. We'll do our log idea first. Derivative of ln something is 1 over that something. So derivative of ln of x to the 4 is 1 over x to the 4. Now let's do the chain rule part. Times the derivative of the inside power rule. The 4 comes out front. The power goes down by 1, so we get 4x cubed from the chain rule. Now think about what that is. That is 4x cubed on the top, and that's x to the 4 on bottom. And I could get rid of three copies of x from each. That would get rid of all of the x cubed, and that would get rid of all but one copy on the bottom for our x to the 4. So we actually get an answer of 4 over x for this one. Let's look here at some others. Derivative of ln of cosine of x. So remember, derivative of ln something is 1 over that something. So just doing the ln part, 
The derivative of ln of cosine x is 1 over cosine x. Now let's do the chain rule part. Chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And maybe if I write this as a fraction, we can see better what it is. If I say negative sine of x over cosine of x, what is that? Do we recognize that? Well, that's our friend tangent there, right? So we get negative tangent of x for this one. All right, looking here, derivative with respect to x of ln x over x. This is really a quotient rule. I have ln of x being my f, and I have x being my g. So I could use the quotient rule here. Remember our quotient rule is low d high minus high d low, all over the square of what lies below. So if we go ahead and do g as our first part, that's just going to be x. And now f prime is next, so the derivative of ln x, we know that, that's our definition here, that's 1 over x. So that's our gf prime part of the quotient rule, minus f, we'll just copy down ln of x, there's our f, and now times g prime, the derivative of x is just 1. So that's the top for us, and we'll go ahead and say all over g squared, and if g is x, then that means g squared is x squared on the bottom. Now do you notice what happens here on the top? So x times 1 over x, think about that's like x over x, right? That'll be 1 minus, what do we get here? ln x times 1 just stays ln of x, doesn't it? And then on the bottom, we'll leave our x squared. I don't think there's really much to reduce here. So we'll go ahead and say 1 minus ln x over x squared. Let's look at one more where we have sort of a layered natural log. So we have ln x inside of another log function derivative with respect to x of ln of ln of x. Say it, it's good for the soul. Let's just do the outside version of ln first, okay? Leaving the inside stuff alone. So remember the derivative of ln something is one over that something, right? So the derivative of ln of this must be one over that, right? This was the inside, that's what goes on the bottom. Chain rule says times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of ln x now? Well, we know that, it's right over here. That's one over x, right? So here we have one over ln x times one over x. That will give us, um, so it doesn't look like x, x in the bottom. I'll put my x in the front of my ln x. That'll look a bit nicer, I think. So one over x times ln x for that one. Okay, hopefully some of our examples of natural exponential and log derivatives have helped you out here. If you want to see some examples involving bases other than e, go ahead and check out our next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you then.